Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gaman Singh, topping our newscast on St. Croix. An incident occurred in the estate Carlton area in Frederick said sometime this morning involving a young man and a marshal. No official information was released about the incident, but we are aware that the young man was shot and is hospitalized. As soon as we receive more information, we will be sure to keep you updated. Count on two for the latest. Acting Director of the VI Bureau of Corrections, Basil Richards, on Thursday confirmed the fatal stabbing of an inmate at the Golden Grove Adult Correctional Facility on St. Croix. Inmate Humphrey Balson, 61 years of age, was pronounced dead at the Wanlui Hospital at approximately 2.15 p.m. Richards said the incident took place between the kitchen just before the chute walkway, which leads to the institution's vocational shops. Several staff witnesses stated that they saw the suspect, inmate Ralph Brathwaite, approach the victim and stab him one time to his upper right chest area. Custody personnel immediately intervened in the altercation and restrained the suspect while others tended to the victim. Paramedics and police were called with both arriving simultaneously. Life-saving measures were immediately administered. However, inmate Balson was pronounced dead shortly thereafter at the Wanlui Hospital. Balson was serving a natural life sentence for first-degree murder and attempted burglary. The suspect, Ralph Brathwaite, 45 years of age, was processed, arrested, and charged with first-degree murder. He's currently serving a 60-year sentence for aggravated rape in the first degree. The acting director said the facility is on lockdown and assures the public that the facility is operating within all security guidelines and protocols to safeguard both the prison population and BOC personnel. Well, police still need your help to find out what happened to a 17-year-old teen who was found dead in the swimming pool of an abandoned home. According to police, Rosalie Figueroa went missing on July 3rd and was found just after 4 p.m. on July 4th on the north side of St. Croix. Police have released a picture of the teen to try to figure out where she may have been before she disappeared. Figueroa left her Lagoon Complex home around noon and never returned. Family members reported her missing around 11 p.m. Figueroa was a recent junior at the St. Croix Educational Complex. And as News 2 reported on Wednesday, the names of the mother and seven-year-old son gunned down in their estate Glen home last Tuesday have been released. They were identified as 28-year-old Kenya Lawrence and her son Devante Charles. Detectives continue to investigate the case and continue to search for the suspects. Lawrence and Devante were in the home along with twins who are about two years old, according to police. Reports indicate that the toddlers were not physically harmed. Police say the call came in about 2 p.m. on Tuesday about shots fired in the area. If you have any information that can assist officers in these investigations, you're asked to call detectives at 712-6037-911 or Crime Stoppers USVI. The Virgin Islands Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Council is looking for volunteers on St. Thomas and St. John for the People's Court Watch program. People Court Watch volunteers are trained citizens who attend court proceedings, take notes, and share them with the Court Watch liaison. Patterns and trends as it relates to judges and sentencing are observed and noted. noted. The information is used for statistics and with interaction with courts and local authorities. More information and training will be provided on Saturday, July 13th at 10 a.m. at the Family Resource Center. For more information, you can call 340-719-0144. Well, Senators Alicia Chucky Hansen, Diane Capehart, Samuel Sanez, and Kenneth Kittens visited the Wanlui Hospital to hear the concerns of employees after a scheduled meeting. Most were voicing their concerns about the resignation of Dr. Griffith, and they're asking for a reinstatement. Senator Alicia Hansen says they are actively engaged in discussions about abolishing the Wanlui Hospital's board. The senators say they are in position to move forward with legislation to do so. Senator Hansen said senators may go into session for this urgent matter. Be sure to count on News 2 to keep you updated. Well, WAPA has been getting some bad rap about the rising price of power per kilowatt hour. But tomorrow, WAPA, in collaboration with the VI Energy Office, is launching an initiative that might provide other options for Virgin Islanders struggling with their WAPA bills. News 2's April Knight has more.
The crippling cost of electricity has caused grief for many VI residents, but with a new initiative led by the Water and Power Authority, relief might be in sight. It's called Why Energize, an exciting new venture that its creators hope would fast-track the territory toward achieving an ambitious goal. 60 by 25 is, is 60 percent reduction in business as usual by 2025. Mm -hmm. So that 60% change in our dependency on fuel oil. The VI government brought in McGowan Associates, which deals with ways to reduce fossil fuel consumption. But first, they have to deal with certain challenges. The big problem that I see right now is other than having available cash to make these investments, it's confusion. What we intend to do is set up a service that helps customers really understand what works and what doesn't work. Deciding to shift toward renewable energy is not an easy choice for many Virgin Islanders, but with a little help from Vi Energize, taking that first step might just become a little easier. Vi Energize is a network of contractors, vendors and engineers all having to do with energy efficiency and renewable energy. A network of vendors mm -hmm. that you can select from based on what this vendor would have in terms of what his experience is going forward, what his experience in the Virgin Islands, what experience he had previously. So all these things will be provided, all this information will be provided to you as a customer. It will also serve as a community forum where consumers can find reviews of energy products and services and should keep vendors from making promises they can't deliver. There's a guy that was sold 20 kilowatts of solar when he only needed five. That's the kind of thing that we want to make sure when you make the decision, you understand what you're buying. There's a fair price to it. If there's any misbehavior, it'll be coming after you. Buy Energize is just kicking off on Friday, but its creators have high hopes that this project would truly make the Virgin Islands sunny and windy in more ways than one. April Night News 2. A Vi Energize kicks off at 9 a.m. tomorrow at the Chase Auditorium at the University of the Virgin Islands St. Thomas campus. To pre-register, you can call 774-3552, extension 2050. Another event is also being planned for St. Croix. We'll turn our attention stateside to authors of the Senate sweep and immigration reform bill walked out of a White House strategy session. Optimistic their colleagues in the White House will take action. Danielle Nottingham has more. From Washington. Two authors of the Senate's sweeping immigration reform bill walked out of a White House strategy session optimistic their colleagues in the House will take action. There is an acknowledgement, uh, no matter where we stand on the solution, that this is a problem that demands uh, addressing. But House Republicans are making it clear they will not vote on the bipartisan Senate bill. They're planning their own piece by piece approach that starts with border security. Dealing with this in bite-sized chunks that members can digest and the American people can digest uh, is the smartest way to go. House Republicans insist they will not be rushed into anything, and there's disagreement in the GOP ranks on whether to even consider a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million illegal immigrants already in the U.S. And I will not under any circumstances either reward or ratify illegal conduct with my vote. But President Obama has no interest in signing a bill that does not include a way for illegal immigrants to become U.S. citizens. He has always uh, said that a path to citizenship is essential to immigration reform. The House is not expected to take its first vote on immigration until September. Danielle Nottingham, News 2. Keeping our eye on the economy, minutes from the Federal Reserve's latest meeting show many Fed officials want to see more signs of improvement in the job market before they begin to pull back on the Fed's bond buying program. A federal judge says Apple broke antitrust laws and conspired with book publishers to raise ebook prices in 2010, as we mentioned yesterday. Emails from the company's late founder and CEO Steve Jobs were used as evidence in the case. Apple now faces a trial to set damages. This is the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank Stock Market Watch. Everything up, the Dow 169, NASDAQ 57, S&P 22. Coming up on News 2, think you have the right ingredients that can add the heat to some cool recipes? The Coup de Croix presents the first annual hot sauce competition on Saturday. And speaking of what's hot, are you ready for fashionista? Supermodel Tiko Armand stop by to share why fashion is her passion and entices you to see what's new and exciting on the runway this weekend. We'll be right back.
The Queen Louise Home for Children on St. Croix was presented with a supply of much needed items for children in their care by the VI Terminal Services LLC. VI Terminal is a new company on island and they wanted to show their support for children in need. We decided to give back to the community uh, in whichever way we could and Queen Louise Home was, was um, my choice. <laughs> And it was agreed upon and our employees and the company decided to uh, match each other and here we are. We bought pampers, very, um, various sizes from infant to pull-ups. We bought adult diapers, we bought Ensure, Pediasure, sheets, uh, washcloths, wipes. It's always wonderful when people give to, to the home and it's always wonderful to be on the receiving end I realized how really giving people are overall, and so I'm really grateful to VI Terminal Services for choosing Queen Louise Home. The VIPD's Weed and Seed Summer Programs on St. Croix is offering three exciting programs. Bliss is a basic life independence skills seminar and will be offered to youth ages 14 to 18. The program prepares youth to function independently and responsibly through fun activities and discussions. Youth 10 to 18 will enjoy the Handy Class of Crafts, which will teach or improve teen skills of arts and crafts. Both of these programs will be held at the Mutual Homes Community Center. Additionally, the Defy program, a week-long overnight summer camp, will begin on July 21st and end on July 27th. This camp will be held at the Howard Wall Boy Scout Campgrounds. Participants will enjoy kayaking, rock climbing, kite flying, paddle boards, jet ski, a bonfire, and much more. For more information on these programs, you can call the Weed and Seed program. That number is 719-3227 or the Crime Prevention Office. That number is 773-6393. Now applications are available at all police stations on St. Croix and on the VIPD's website. What are you wearing? Not sure if the outfit matches your personality? Well, Fashionista is the event that can get you on the right track. Over 40 models will show off the summer collection in the Fashion and Flair Showcase. Special guests will be in the house, including top model Tico Amon out of South Beach, Miami, and IQ. They both stopped by to give us a sneak peek into this weekend's summer festival. This one is high energy. It's high energy. It's a combination of um, young, of course, like always, young and mature look. And it's just, it's, I'm, I'm so into it. You know, so I feel the hype now. I'm just kind of anxious, so to speak. So it's, it's going to be very high energy. And of course, with a special guest like Tico, we're going to really bring the house down. Yeah, fashionista to me is more of an attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily what you wear, but it's how you wear it. Because this dress could be $10, but you wouldn't know that. You know, just to basically prove a point. So I think um, when it comes to fashion, when it comes to modeling, or whatever it is that you do in life, I think it's first an attitude. Once you have that attitude in line, and everything else eventually falls in line because people are going to be pulled in by that attitude, you know? They're going to, you're going to will them in by that. And then everything else will eventually fall in place. So well, Tico is from Haiti, and besides modeling the stunning beauty, Tico also sings, raps, and writes poetry and have posed for cameras of some of the biggest name photographers and runways, grace many runways worldwide. Now, a portion of the proceeds will benefit Partners for Health, St. Thomas St. John and Ivan Edorkin Class of 76 Scholarship Fund. Well, hot sauce lovers unite. The Crew de Croix presents Strand on Fire, the first annual hot sauce competition on Saturday, July 20th at 2 p.m. at the Hotel Comanche Rum and Wine Bar. It's only $20 to enter and the proceeds help Crew de Croix events such as Mardi Croy and the Dog Parade. Registration begins at 1 p.m. with prizes awarded at 5 p.m. There will be live entertainment, kids' activities, and a sidewalk sale, and much more. We are having taste cups, 50 cents per cup. We also have oysters, tuna, uh, sushi, sushi, sashimi uh, to uh, go with that. $20 to enter, but you can sell your hot sauce. Lawyers in the George Zimmerman murder trial have begun making their closing arguments. Zimmerman is charged with second-degree murder for fatally shooting 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. The judge ruled this morning that the jury may also consider the lesser charge of manslaughter, but she ruled against the charge of third-degree murder. Suzanne McGinnis reports from the courthouse in Sanford, Florida. 
The prosecution has begun its closing argument in the George Zimmerman murder trial. A teenager is dead. He is dead through no fault of his own. Earlier, Judge Deborah Nelson made a key ruling. The court will give the instruction on um, manslaughter. The judge ruled the jury can consider the lesser charge of manslaughter if they don't find George Zimmerman guilty of second-degree murder. Zimmerman's lawyers wanted the jury to decide on second-degree murder or acquittal. The state has charged him with second-degree murder. They should be required to prove it if they can. Zimmerman, a former neighborhood watchman, claims he shot Trayvon Martin in self-defense. The judge's decision means the defense now has to be concerned about jurors returning a compromise verdict. I think that the prosecution at this point, maybe just trying to, you know, uh, from a PR standpoint, damage control, get some kind of conviction. Each side will have three hours to present its final case to the jury. First the prosecution, then the defense gets its chance. You know, criminal statutes are pretty precise. There was tension in the courtroom as the judge admonished one defense attorney for his repeated objections. You continually disagree with this court every time I make a ruling. Do not continue to argue with the court after we've ruled. Also this morning, both sides hashed out final jury instructions. The jury of six women is expected to begin deliberations Friday. And we will keep you updated. Now, don't forget, just a quick reminder, the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life of St. Thomas will take place this weekend from 4 p.m. on Saturday, July 13th to 10 a.m. Sunday, July 14th at the Charlotte Amali High School track. The relay was previously postponed. The Relay for Life teams will take to the track in support of raising funds for the American Cancer Society in their effort to create a world with less cancer and more, more birthdays. Teams are designated green t-shirts and survivors are designated purple t-shirts. A parade will kickstart the relay providing entertainment as part of the celebration will be Poison Band, Sweeter Band, Full Circle Band, and Mass Impact Band. There will also be a variety of fun-filled games and activities for all ages. A wellness tent for screenings will also be set up. Stick around, your News 2 AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.